everyone. I hope you all are having a good day today and staying safe at home. It's Olivia Chapman from Tortured Vines back again for Grocery Store Wines Volume 2. So one thing I was super thrilled about whenever I went to buy the wine is that Publix has lifted their two bottle per person maximum. So that was really great for me because I was able to buy four bottles, get everything I needed to film and stock up our house. So if you we're avoiding Publix because of that, safe to go back. Now today, we definitely have a little bit more diverse wine than we did last time. Wanted to get some reds in there, some whites, some sparkling. So we'll start light, move to the heavier ones, which is what you always want to do with tastings. Again, if you're new to us, I always recommend stemmed glassware, just so you can appropriately do the tasting. Stemless is great for hanging on the patio and just a casual glass of wine, but for proper tasting, you need some stemmed glassware. Also, Americans generally drink our reds too warm and our whites too cold. So I always like to pop the reds in the fridge for just about 15 minutes beforehand and then also take the whites out for about 15 minutes beforehand as well, just so that everything can get to a better tasting temperature. Again, if you missed my video on sparkling wine, Sparkling, you want it as cold as possible. It helps keep the bubbles. So to start, we'll start with this Decoy Chardonnay. It's a 2018 bottle. And now if you don't know anything about Decoy, it's actually a, a sub-brand of the Duckhorn Vineyards line. And so they're more affordable, more everyday wines that you can find. So for today, we've chosen their Chardonnay. So you basically get that big brand wine at a grocery store price. And this one was uh, $17.59. So really good price for an oaky Chardonnay. So what we'll do is we'll start again with our what's that approach to tasting. So first you look at the wine and I would call this um, lemon color. As you can see it's a little bit uh, richer in color a little bit deeper in color, more of that proper lemon yellow than gold. What we do next is the nose. So I'm getting some honey, some apricot, um, a little bit of yellow apple actually as well. And then also some notes of vanilla. And now one thing, if you know anything about grapes, Grapes are known for fruity flavors, um, you know, different, different fruits. So the apple, the pear, the plum, the cherry, the blueberry always come from the grapes. But as you might know, grapes aren't vanilla. They're not oak. That all comes from the barrels that the wine's aged in. So this one gets its vanilla notes from being aged in 25% new oak barrels. So that's just a fun fact about wine. Now we move on to the fun part, the tasting. Now I would say the tasting really does follow the nose pretty closely. You do get some of that buttery, creamy Chardonnay textures, which is great for a heavy Chardonnay. Um, also got some pineapple, some orange, some of that vanilla. So really similar to that nose. Same that apple, that pear, that peach. So it's a really great oaky, but yet still pretty fruity Chardonnay. It'd be a crowd pleaser Chardonnay, not those ones that are unoaked or too oaky. It'd be a really good middle of the road one in my opinion. Something else that's cool about this wine is that it got um, 90 points in a James Suckling Award, so that's really cool. It actually is an awarded wine. Actually, most of our wines today are awarded wines. And now, lastly, the things that would be good to pair this with, I would love this with a risotto, especially seafood risotto, so some lobster, some shrimp. That would be a really excellent pairing. Um, you'll see in a later video when we talk about Chardonnay and pairings that Chardonnay is really well buttery, creamy dishes. So even an Alfredo would be great with this. Some of those bigger, bolder flavors pair really, really well, some Chardonnay. Next, you all already know I love sparkling wine. 
So I chose the Mum Napa Brut Prestige. This is one of my favorite bottles of wine. I buy it all the time as gifts. It's really great if you have to go somewhere and bring a wine. Um, it's a crowd pleaser wine. It's a really great price point. And everyone loved it. The last place I brought it, everyone was taking pictures of the bottle so they could buy it later. And the price point on this one is $21.99. Now this one is NV, which means new vintage. So it's their latest harvest, latest released. It's not an aged wine. And that generally allots for about 80% of the wine that most bubbly winemakers make. They bottle it and put it right on out. Now, this one's a California sparkling wine, but it does follow the same protocols as the French. So you do get some of that same feel as a champagne, but since the grapes weren't harvested in Champagne, France, it can't be called champagne, but it does have a lot of those big, bold flavors, that same feeling. So this one, you know, one of our favorite wines. And now champagne's made from different grapes. It can be made from Chardonnay, from Pinot Noir, all sorts of different grapes. This one is 45% Chardonnay, 45% Pinot Noir, and then the 10% that remains is Pinot Gris and Pinot Manoa. So that gives it a little bit of its darker colors, that blend of grapes. So next, let's move into our Wasset approach to wine tasting. This I would say is definitely more of a golden color. It's not as lemon yellow, if you can perceive that here. So I would call this definitely more of a golden. You can see those bubbles, you can see its effervescence, and you can also see that it has that fine layer of bubbles at the top, which is called the mousse. So it has a really, really beautiful mousse on it as well. Next, we move to the nose. So definitely some yellow apple in this one. A lot of yellow apple, a lot of tree fruit, some nectarine, and again, a little bit of that vanilla and actually a little bit of some honey, I would say. That again comes from the aging in oak barrels. Because with this one, what's really interesting is they pick the grapes, harvest the grapes, they then ferment some in steel tanks and some in barrels to add to that complexity of the wine and build the layers on it. They then blend it all together age it for 18 months, and then after that 18 months, they add the dosage, which if you're familiar with champagne making, dosage is when they add a little bit of sweet wine. Again, gives it more complexity, a little bit more sweetness, does leave you with a little bit of residual sugar. Um, so then they add that, let it sit for another three months, and then it's good to go. So back to our tasting. Here comes the fun part, actually drinking the wine. You definitely get some of that tart crispness, a little bit of acidity. Definitely a lot of that fleshy golden apple I was talking about. A little bit of this honey baked brioche bread that's really common in champagnes is to sort of have some of that honey, that buttery, that biscuity finish. I would say also some nectarine, a little bit of apricot. So this one is just a really great wine. Again, it's won a lot of awards. Um, 92 points from Wine Enthusiast, 90 points from Wine Spectator. And again, if I didn't mention the price on this one, it was $21.99 whenever I purchased it. Now, moving on, they do harvest the grapes from 50 different plots and they pick only the best grapes because that's why they call it their Brut Prestige versus just a regular Brut or anything like that. So they do pick just the best grapes from all of those plots. So that's just a really another fun wine making fact about this wine. Now, as far as pairings go, I love champagne on its own any day, any time. I love a sparkling wine. I would never say no to it. So that's my personal favorite pairing. I think this wine's great for 24 seven drinking. <laughs> but if you wanted a more official pairing, Really great some hors d'oeuvres, so with crab cakes, smoked salmon, things like that as an aperitivo. Great, great pairing there. Um, also, things are a little bit fresher, so fresh green salad, grilled chicken, grilled veggies, also some really great pairings. Um, but again, this is one of our very, very favorite wines. Great wine to take somewhere, because I know 
People always ask what a good wine is whenever they're going somewhere and need to bring something. So that's a wonderful option. Next up, we have something really fun here today. This is a Beaujolais, and this is Louis Jadot. So I don't know how many of you know about Beaujolais. The first time I had a Beaujolais was in a wine pairing class. I had to get a set training, and now I like to buy it just because it's a really cool, different, unique wines. I also find that if you buy something that's not a Chardonnay, not a Cab, not a typical uh, grape, you can get a better wine at a better price. So this wine's actually a really excellent, delicious wine. Winemaker's been around since 1852, but it retails really inexpensively for the quality of wine. I think the same thing with Rioja is a really good one, Albarino, just because people aren't buying them just because it's something that's different. And then this wine retailed for $13.99. And if you don't know anything about Beaujolais, it's 100% Gamay grape. With Beaujolais, it's one of those wines that's named for the region it's produced in instead of the grapes. So Beaujolais is a little region inside of Burgundy, France. So that's why it's called Beaujolais versus Cabernet is named for the grape, sparkling wine just because it's sparkling wine, and Chardonnay is named for the Chardonnay grape. So Beaujolais, again, named for the region. Same thing as Burgundies, Bordeaux, even Champagne name for the region they're produced in. So I think that's a little bit different, a little bit fun. Now we are talking about the winemakers. They are located in the Cote d'Or region in Burgundy. Well, inside of Beaujolais, inside of Burgundy. Um, and that's actually a really prestigious region to be in. And they have 528 hectares for wine. And hectares are about a lot more than an acre. So <laughs> I think it's about 10 to 20 acres or in a hectare. So they have a lot of really wonderful Primo wine real estate. They've been doing this since 1852, so they're pretty good at it. Now we'll move on to our what's that approach to wine. Again, we'll look at the appearance. You want to make sure that you really do hold it against something that's lightly colored and get a really good look here, especially with reds is more important than with whites in my opinion. So you'll see, I would call this like a magenta and it does look a little bit thin. It's not too dark. You can really see through the glass. And then later we'll compare that to that Cabernet. Now, we'll go ahead and go for the nose. I would agree, the nose is still really light, goes with that light color. Um, it almost smells like a watermelon Jolly Rancher to me. And I know that's a pretty common thing of Beaujolais is to have that really sugary sweet nose. You also get a little bit of strawberry and just some hints of spice as well. Now we'll move on to tasting it. And now Beaujolais doesn't taste nearly as sweet as it smells. So the nose is definitely the sweetest part of this wine. I would say you still get a lot of that strawberry, um, a little bit of black cherry as well, and still just that little kick of spice. Not as spicy as a Syrah or anything like that, but still just a little bit of spice that you know in a red wine and a little bit of that bitter for bitterness from the tannins. But again, it's a pretty lightly tannic wine, not nearly as heavy as a Cabernet or anything like that. Now, something that's cool about their winemaking is they pick the grapes in bunches and they actually cold press them. So that's something that's a little bit different. Um, Something that's similar to most Beaujolais wine styles, but just cool they don't pick the individual grapes, they actually pick them off as like kind of the whole, the whole bunch at a time. And now moving on, we will go to the pairings. This one, since it's a little bit lighter than most reds, it goes better with some more mild foods. So mild cheeses, something that's a little bit lighter. Uh, poultry dishes as well is really good. I would even say some lighter pork dishes, like a pork carnita, something with a little bit of spice. I think this would be a great pairing um, versus something that's like a little bit heavier. Also game bird, so duck, goose, everything like that. This is a really cool, really fun pairing. Again, Beaujolais is cool just because it's something that's really different. And lastly, if you can't see the bottle, I used to struggle spelling it. It is B-E-A 
U J O L A I S. Beaujolais. <laughs> now we're going to move on to our last wine of the day, also our heaviest wine that we're going to be talking about. We have the Noble Vines 337 Cabernet. And this is actually their 2017 bottle. If you've watched anything I've done before, you know I love Noble Vines. My husband and I have loved it since we started dating. Their 667 Pinot Noir. I featured their 515 Rosé in a previous video. So we just love Noble Vines. We love everything the Delicato family does. So one of definitely our favorite winemakers. And this wine retails for $13.59. What's really fun is that this wine's been touted to be a really good buy that it's under $15, but it's still that big, bold, heavy cab. Now, a lot of people think that to get that bold, heavy cab, you have to spend a lot of money, but this wine proves that you really don't have to. So this is a really cool grocery pickup for people that like a heavier wine to still be really impressive and something that will please all of your wine drinkers. Now, the 337 is actually made from, grant, from grapes that were in Bordeaux, France. So they had the vines growing there, clipped the vines, planted them in Lodi, California. So it's really cool that it does come from a really prestigious wine stock. And it gets its name, the 337, because that's the name of that clone that this wine comes from. That's why they call it the 337. What else is really cool about those grapes is that they're actually a lot smaller than your typical Cabernet grape. So they're small, they're concentrated. They also ripe a little bit earlier in the year. So there's this sort of debate whether pick them early when they're ripe or wait until fall whenever everything else is being harvested. So that's just something that's cool about this wine and also why you get some of that heavier, bolder taste. Now we're gonna move into our listed approach to wine tasting. So we'll start by looking at the wine and I don't know if you have the Beaujolais and the 337 side by side right now, but if you look at them, you'll see this one's much more of a ruby deep red also a little bit darker and a little bit thicker I would say more intensity less opaque than the Beaujolais the Beaujolais is more of a pink so if you do them next to each other it's really cool really easy to make that comparison from looking at them side by side next we're gonna move on to the nose So lots of black cherry, plums, some of those really lush, ripe red fruits. Also, you do get some of that oak, a lot of spice in this one compared to the Beaujolais and even compared to the Chardonnay. And again, that comes from the barrel aging. Also, little hints of chocolate. Again, that comes from those toasted barrels. And now we'll move on to the palate. The first thing I noticed, especially in comparison to the Beaujolais, is that it does have that more heavily tannic, that mouth feel. And by that I mean it's sort of like comparing a skim wine, or excuse me, a skim milk to a whole milk. The whole milk is much thicker. You kind of can feel that milk in your mouth a whole lot more than you can with a skim. And that's kind of from those tannins, give you some of that mouth feel. Also that drying, kind of that bitter taste. Again, still has lots and lots of rich fruit. So it still has that plum, lots and lots of that black cherry, um, those rich, ripe red fruits. It also does have a lot of spice. You can taste that oak. Again, that comes from the barrel aging because grapes can't give you that oak taste. You can definitely compare that here. And it does end with some notes of coffee, which again comes from the barrel age aging. And now we'll talk about the pairings. So Cabernets in general, especially this one, go really well with red meat. And we'll talk about this later, but tannic wines cut some of that fattiness, that animal fat taste. So it's really, really great with steaks, um, hamburgers, with venison even, even though it's a little bit leaner. Really things that are a little bit bolder, heavier of a food. 
It actually was voted one of the best hamburger wines. And my husband and I tried that out last night. Noble Vines, 337 Hamburgers. It's gonna be one of our favorite new pairings. It just balances out perfectly. You get a lot of those great flavors. Still that juiciness, that freshness, um, but they also are both a little bit heavy. So that's a really great pairing to do. You don't wanna do a really heavy food with a lighter wine, otherwise you just totally overpower it. Otherwise, really great wine. Again, now that it's getting nice, keep it in hand for some hamburgers. And now, hopefully you're armed with four easy, under $25 wines that you can grab from the grocery store. And you can get all four bottles at one time now that Publix has removed that rule. So I hope you enjoy these. They give you some easy things to reach for at the store. Um, some fun brands too to play around with and some really fun pairings as well. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you know the latest and greatest things coming out, all the fun things. We are planning to do a giveaway soon, so make sure you're staying tuned. Otherwise, you all have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and stay thirsty, my friends. This has been another episode of Quarantine and Chilled Wine.